Hey guys, happy Boxing Day. It is the Hockey Card Whisperer, and holy fuck, I uh, I had to take yesterday off after my epic five and a half hour live stream um, uh, Christmas Eve debacle with uh, with uh, uh, shotgun and beers and having a good old time, and uh, lots of people were coming in and sharing the screen and hammering back booze, and uh, yeah, just a just a fucking shit show on Christmas Eve. So, needless to say, yesterday I was in cog fucking nido. And uh, chilling out and uh, literally keeping out of anything that reflected any kind of bright lights. And uh, woke up today after I think I had another 11 hours sleep last night. And fuck, went to Starbucks, picked up the London Fog, save your fucking comments. And um, yeah, so we're ready to roll here. So I figure we'll do a, a quick Boxing Day, uh, big, uh, Boxing Day uh, whisper a uh, couple topics. One, the Kirby Doc injury. Fuck, you see this? This fucking wrist, eh? Holy fuck. Um, that's what happens. That's, that's, uh, and you know who's pissed off about this, right? Chicago Blackhawks. And yeah, you knew that. And every time they lend a guy out to play in these fucking tournaments and somebody gets injured, remember Tavares getting, I think it was Tavares a few years back that got the big leg injury in the world championships. And then, uh, you know, he was fucked up for the Islanders for a while. And then obviously Doc with this. So I, 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 it's a big blow to Team Canada. But, <clears throat> um, you know, they do have the best team. They probably should win. But, Russians played pretty good last night against the Americans, and uh, anytime you got Larry Onoff on the bench, you know who is, who is you know probably regarded as you know the Gretzky of Russia, and and probably rightly so. Um, you know those guys are going to play really hard for him, and they played really good good against the Americans last night. So, uh, so anyways, listen, we're getting a lot. I've getting a lot of, a lot of comments about <clears throat> you know people, you know asking about how long we've been in the hobby and uh, how we got started and things like that and, and kind of the progressions of which and for me <clears throat> and my brother Frank and again uh, we do a lot of stuff together but a lot of people think that we're partners we're not we we travel together uh, we share some expenses and uh, you know we share on some deals that we both like but uh, for the most part you know he's he's focused in on really really high-end mantles and things like that and, and everything else and and I have a, I have a different way of uh, of, of uh, 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 kind of a mid-level clientele and he's got, you know, a real high level. So, um, we kind of, <clears throat> kind of do our thing, but we kind of got into the, into the hobby at the same time. We were living in Calgary and I think it was 88 or 89 when we first got into it. And I'll never forget, I was at, I think the Lime Ridge Mall in Calgary and I was, uh, was, so it was 89 it was just when Sackic gear came out, but I didn't even know about the Sackic gear. I didn't really know much about hockey cards, but um, it was the Lime Ridge Mall, and I was going there. It was Christmas, and it might have been 80, it might It was when Black 9091 Upper Deck came out, because I remember the Belfort rookie, right? So I went to Lime Ridge Mall, and I saw a bunch of tables set up, and I was like, what the fuck? You know, I remember collecting hockey cards as a kid. You know, in Winnipeg, especially in 79, I was 11 years old, and, um, you know, after the game... You know, you get a Coke and a buy-pack hockey cards. And that was Gretzky rookie year. And before that was, you know, 78, 79 and 77, 78. That's sort of where when I was 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, that's kind of where I got started collecting. And it wasn't even collecting. I mean, fuck, it was just gambling, really. I mean, we played topsies. We put our, you know, make noise in our bike spokes like everyone else did. But so fast forward, you know, from not being involved in hockey cards to going to Lime Ridge. Oh, no, was it Lime Ridge Mall? I don't know, was that in fucking Hamilton? I don't know, one fucking mall in Calgary, right? And um, so I walk around, I see this fucking card show going on. So I'm in, in, you know, kind of looking around and seeing what's going on and, it, and just sat there and watched and watched the money that was trading hands back then. It was, it was fucking unbelievable. So I go back and my brother was selling sunrooms at the time with my dad at his company. And <clears throat> I said to Frank, I said, fuck, you can't, can't believe what I just saw, right? Like, so... Immediately, I went to the local card shop and I bought, I figured I'm going to fucking do this. I went and bought three boxes of 9091 Upper Deck, the black box, right? And I fucking opened every pack. I didn't have a top loader. I didn't have a penny sleeve, obviously. I didn't have showcases. But there's a show every Saturday and Sunday at a different mall in the city. So I called the guy and I said, listen, I want to do the show. And he goes, okay. So he put me in. It was 25 bucks for a table. I got one table, right? I think I paid $45 a box for all, like for each box. So it was at 90, $135, 25, 30 for the table. So I was in for about 150 altogether. And uh, 
you know, I pulled out like seven Belfours and some Fedorovs and whatever. And I just laid them all across the table. I did like $550 at my first show. And that was fucking done. I was, I was hooked at that point. Right. And then, and I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about 80s stuff. I didn't know anything about 70s. I knew nothing. Guys were coming up to the table. Do you want to buy? And I'm like, no, because I just kept going to buy the black boxes of Upper Deck. And then French came out. Right. And I was lucky to buy a few boxes right off the bat because I've been buying boxes. And that's when those fuckers were $20 a pack. Right. So I make it hand over fist. And then I remember Frank, Frank came down to the show and saw what was going on. And the next thing I know, like two, honest to God, two weeks later, Frank shows back up at the office at our, my dad's sunroom company. <clears throat> And his first two cards he ever bought were two Phil Esposito rookie cards. I'll never forget it. And in 1965, and he showed them to me, and I was I was like, "What the fuck are those?" Right? And uh, and the next thing you know, that's all me and him did for the next year was and we had and listen, there was no money back then. I had I had um, I was dating a girl who. Um, inherited a bunch of money, right? So she's like, here, go have some fucking fun. And I think she gave me like 25 grand. And I met a buddy named Aaron in Calgary who, who drove this ridiculously sick Mustang. And we would just go around to different stores and buy all their cards and then go to the show and triple our money, right? And then, you know, and then Frank started to get into it. And we both like were really, you know, every show we started to go and go and go, right? And, uh, and then... You know, we started to learn more about the vintage and and then getting into things like the Mickey Mantle rookies where we got very well. Frank Frank found a shit ton when we first started. Um, but uh, it was in Calgary where we got our start. And then <clears throat> fast forward to when Beanie Babies came out. So my dad, right, he made a bunch of deals with a bunch of Hallmarks and was able to buy all these Beanie Babies. At this time, I'm not living in Boston, Massachusetts. Frank is still living in Calgary and uh, with my dad. And then, no, then Frank went to Toronto. So Frank's in Toronto. I'm in Boston. My dad's in Calgary. My dad has got like eight or ten hallmarks on the go where he's buying all these Beanie Babies for five, six, no, three, four, five dollars, including all the big bears. And he opens up a shop in one of the malls, right? And I remember buying maple bears off my dad because I was in the States and they couldn't get them. So I'm doing hockey cards. I got two stores in, in Massachusetts. I got a, uh, um, a brick and mortar store um, in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. And then I've also got a flea market that we do every weekend, which the flea market would do 20 times the money that my store would do. But I was focused. I was always focused, never just on one thing. So I had tons of Beanie Babies and I had sports cards and tons of baseballs and a vintage wax, all kinds of shit. And so I'd call my dad and I'd be like, all right, listen, what do you got for Maple Bears? And he goes, well, I got, you know, I got 48 I can sell you, but they're 150 Canadian apiece. I'm like, what the fuck, dad? Like fucking straight, you're like straight stroking me right now, right? And he goes, no, he says, you'll sell them for like four or $500. And so I fucking send them, you know, put on the credit card. He'd send me, it was like eight grand. And I would take those Beanie Babies at the flea market because that's where they sold. And I was getting four or $500 a piece for those fucking things. He did so well in Calgary on just Beanie Babies. That this fucking guy bought bought and paid for his house in cash from Beanie Baby Money. And our fucking place in, in Boston, you know, with just Beanie Babies, it could have retired on. But, you know, but, but okay, so anyway, so long story short. So as we progressed, right, uh, this is when I got out of the hobby. So September 11th happens, 2001, right? And so the way that I used to work at, I used to have my brick and mortar store in Cal uh, in uh, Boston, and I'd fucking every Saturday, Sunday, I would take all the shit from the store, close the store down on the weekends because it made no sense to be open, <clears throat> and then bring everything to the flea market. You know, at a ten by thirty fucking booth, it looked like you know it was an unbelievable place, and and I would bring everything there, and I had two guys that worked for me, so I just you know whatever. So that prior week, I was in um, playing at a hockey tournament in, in Disney. And uh, so on Monday, the 10th of September, we had flown home on United back into Boston, right? Uh, my buddy, Sean Davis, who just recently passed away, uh, came over to the house. He flew home with me because he lived in New York. Um, so 
he's like, all right, so we'll just hang out. So we wake up September 11th morning and obviously September 11th happens <clears throat> and um, he's not going anywhere, right? So he's going to stay with me. On September 15th, uh, my wife at the time, Lynn, was a nurse and I played hockey for the New York Cyclones um, in New York City. And uh, two of our guys on our teams were firefighters. Our coach was, uh, you know, an AT&T guy. So, you know, they're all down there. Luckily, nothing really happened to those guys. My buddy Chet Wakey was a New York City cop. Um, you know, we had a lot of guys, first responders, playing on our team. So on the 15th, it was a really beautiful Saturday morning. And so me and the wife said, fuck, let's get in the car. Drove to New, new, uh, new London, Connecticut, and um, jumped on the ferry and took the ferry to uh, Orient Point. For those in Long Island know where Orient Point is. It's the most, you know, uh, eastern tip of, of Long Island. So you get on there and then you fucking run, come through the back way into New York because you don't want to go up the 95 because it's just a fucking shit show. Plus, most of it was closed down. So long story short, we get into fucking New York City. We park in Chinatown and um, 15, or 15 or 20 blocks away. And there's literally this much soot everywhere in New York on all the cars. We make our way to the Wall of the Missing and we're on Church Street. And we're looking straight down, like straight down the fucking road. And you can see, you know, that famous, the smoke and all the fucking, you know, the towers kind of leaning on each other there that, after they came down. So we do that. We, you know, we kind of take that all in and, uh, you know, we, we start heading back, right? And um, we get to New Haven, which is the halfway point. Like we came back to 95 because it was late. The, the ferries were done running, right? So uh, get to New Haven, stop at TGIF to grab by deep. It's about 830 at night and I get a phone call on my phone obviously phone call on your phone no kidding you dumb fuck and um one of the guys that works for me brandon calls me says hey mike listen i got fucking pretty bad news for you uh your fucking hockey card store is on fire right the flea market that i was in it's got 150 stores like it wasn't like you think about a flea market this place was a a business development like it was ridiculous the store like it was a two million dollar hardware store in there i mean it was unbelievable anybody that had been there in random knew that that place was fucking no joke and did tons of cash and um, place burned to the fucking ground. And I lost everything. And when I tell you that I lost everything, you guys know or have seen kind of the, the stuff that we deal with now. I had in that store at that time over $300,000 with the product, including a complete 53, uh, 54 tops baseball set. I had mantle stuff. I had game sign bats. I had beanies. I had, you know, 33 hockey, you know, Ice Kings, fucking Hamilton chewing gum, Canadian chewing gum. I had about 15 Gretzky rookies. I mean, I had a shit ton of stuff in there and it was all gone. And the worst part was, is I also had $150,000 on consignment. And let me explain to everybody on here, when you take a consignment deal on, nobody wants to hear about a fucking fire. Nobody wants to hear about anything other than where the fuck is my money and where are my cards? And oh, if you had a fire, where was the insurance? Well, anybody back then that knew anything about anything knew that you still, well, you couldn't insure fucking sports memorabilia back then. And if you did, the only place you could was Lloyd's of London, right? So, and that was like 15, 20 grand a year. And there was nobody that was doing that because the fire was literally the only thing that could fucking destroy you. Theft, they might only get a little bit, but fire was fucking the end game. And so I went to the fucking place in the morning and it was just, a fucking black charred puddle of nothing, right? And I lost everything. And when I mean everything, I, you know, Junior Huntsy was fucking six years old. Um, 94, 95, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, 7 years old. You see, I use my fucking fingers. Fuck you. And um, that was it. I was done. I lost everything. I lost every line of credit. I lost, I was $30,000 in credit card because what I do is I had an American Express credit card. I would buy at the beginning of the month spend 20, 30 grand and pay it off at the end of the month. Well, I was already fucking leveraged 30 because it happened on the 11th or the 15th. So in the middle of the month, gone, all my product was gone. Everything was fucking gone. Obviously my customers were gone and I went back to my card shop and I had wax, right? And that didn't last. So I shut that down. So September 15th, 2001, I lost everything in the card business. And from that moment on, I was out. I was out of the business until, I mean, I looked around. I never bought a card. I never bought an autograph. I never bought, sold, trade, bartered, anything until 2017. I don't know, 17 years I was out of the hobby. Like literally out of the hobby. 
I, I come into Winnipeg when I'm from come from Boston, visit Frank. He's doing a couple card shows. I, I just had such a fucking distaste because again, I not only lost everything, but I had to fucking recoup and fucking pay back 150 G's uh, on stuff that I, you know, it's a fucking horrible. Let me fucking tell you. Be careful when you take consignments on anything. So um, how I got back into it was I was running around a garage sales here in Winnipeg. And I was in St. James and down a back lane. And I said to, I saw this, me and me and Mills were at it. And I saw this, uh, I saw this fucking Britannia Beanie Baby sitting in a case at this garage sale. And just off the cuff, I said, hey, do you, do you have any sports stuff, sports memorabilia? And the guy just laughed. He took me down in his basement. This is my bud who's got the 300 game used jerseys. Um, but he had 800 WHA game used autographs. I mean, game used programs, excuse me. And um, I ended up buying those programs, put them in my garage. And Rick Smith, my buddy in Winnipeg, came over. And from that moment on, from those uh, 800 programs, is now what we've turned back into this. Frank's been doing it the entire time. Um, but me, I, I had a real sour taste in my mouth from this fucking hobby. And you really knew who your friends were um, um, when, when disaster happens. You know who you can tr you, you know who who's always been for you there, and you know who who are just fucking people that were trying to use you for 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 this that or the other, um, and that's why I come into the game now uh, with a different perspective on how to do this and and to always you know always remember those that helped me back then, and then you know try to do the same for guys now because I've been there. I have lost fucking everything to a fire, and not only that, the part you don't know is is that from that fire. Two weeks later, where I was making three, four thousand dollars a weekend, I was now sharpening skates at J and B Skate Sharpening in in Fall River, Massachusetts, for seven dollars and fifty cents an hour, and that's the fucking that was from here to here, from nobody telling me what to do to fucking being Mike the Garbage Boy. And by the way, you got thirty pairs of skates to sharpen. Here's your fucking two hundred ninety dollar check, boys. It can fucking happen like that. So that's sort of the progression of myself and Frank and kind of, and there's a billion stories, which we will get into about, you know, finding the, finding the mantle that graded nine that the, uh, that the, I think it was the Chicago Bears or Detroit Lions football player ended up with. Um, that was one of Frank's big mantles, bought a medicine hat um, with a complete set of fucking 52s. I mean, there's, there's the V145s, uh, um, you know, uh, Pollen's, Pollen's chocolates, the pre-war stuff that we've had, the mantles that we've had, the Gretzky's that we've had. I remember going to a Gloria Rothstein show in in uh, New York, uh, which Rothstein, if you just Google Gloria Rothstein, the big one of the biggest shows, you know, every, I think once a month that we would go there. I remember going to a table and buying 40 Gretzky rookies and 40 Lemieux rookies for $4,500 back in the day. Just boom, how much for the entire fucking, and that was it, took the whole thing. It was just fucking stupid. So... Been around, been around, been around a lot of wars, boys, and the fucking hobby's been amazing for us, and it's been, and it's been absolutely death. So, um, hope that gives you a little perspective on uh, on myself and where I come at this from, and a little bit on Frank. You know, Frank doesn't do too many of these videos because he's got a fucking face for radio. So, um, and he'll admit that. He'll admit that. He's got mirrors in his house. He can fucking. He, I mean, it's not hard to see. So, I basically do the talking here. But again, uh, yeah, that's that's basically a little insight. Um, like I said, there's, <clears throat> there's, there's fucking stories that are going to come out here about the, 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 the things that we've done in this hobby. And, uh, uh, some of them are pretty laugh out loud funny, but that fucking fire September 15th, 2001 was not one of the funnier moments and, uh, gives you a little perspective. So, all right, listen, boys, I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. Um, go get your fucking London fog, keep the gay jokes out of your fucking mouth. And, uh, we'll talk to you guys New Year's Eve for another live event where I'm going to shotgun fucking eight beers in like about 45 seconds. Like I did the other night. Feel better today, boys. All right. Fuck you guys. See ya.